on Acoustic Tuesday, episode number 56, an immersive acoustic guitar experience, an unlikely acoustic guitar hero, and you get to see how your scales measure up. All that and more right after this. If you believe that playing acoustic guitar is about sharing the joy of music with friends and family, not just mastering the technical side of playing, then this show is your dream come true. Every Tuesday morning, I give you my list of exciting guitar geek discoveries, gear, and new music so you can stay inspired to live your best acoustic life. I'm Tony Castro, and this is the Acoustic Tuesday Show. Guitar geeks, unite. Welcome to Acoustic Tuesday, episode number 56. This is a show where you're going to learn about acoustic guitar gear, discover acoustic artists, and get inspired to live your very best and very boldest acoustic life. As with all episodes of Acoustic Tuesday, it is packed full of items off of my guitar geek list for the week. Things that you absolutely need to know about. And, of course, I am here... Not alone. No, I couldn't do this alone. There's no way in hell I could do this alone. I'm joined by Sir Noah Jacob Heckman Jr., the first, the man with the plan, the man that can seal any deal. Noah, how are you? Tony, I'm doing great. I felt like I was introducing you like a a wrestler, you know? Like, was it Ed yeah. McMahon? Yeah. Not Ed McMahon. Well, what we, was the I, WWF I, guy? I don't know, but I know what you're talking about, because yeah. we were talking about wrestling, actually. Hmm? We were talking about wrestling and being strong and fighters. Yeah. <laughs> you're doing well today you feel like a strong fighter today? i am i do okay. i feel Good. strong and i'm excited about what you have on the list today well we're gonna do things a little differently i mean i'm gonna just switch things up it's gonna be a, a panacea of curveballs today if you will a cornucopia of detours and we're gonna start things off with a little talk about scales when you first start playing guitar or any instrument for that matter there's this stress put on learning scales and you go to do it and it's not really that fun at all i should say it's more often than not not fun but today i'm going to share with you five tips on how to effectively practice your scales and have fun doing so uh, I think I think scales are an absolute necessity to learn. I'm not here to tell you don't learn scales. That's silly. Scales are an absolute necessity necessity to learn because that's where our chords come from. That's how we can convey musical ideas. That's how we can play melodies. It's how we can create our own original music. So scales are are supremely important. But I'm going to share with you these tips because. I want you to practice your scales, and I want you to have fun doing it, and I want them to make musical sense. So here goes nothing. I'm gonna grab my trusty guitar. I'm gonna use the, uh, I'm gonna use my Thompson Dreadnought today that uh, has a great pair of strings on it. I'm gonna tell you about those a little bit later. Uh, Let's focus on scales for right now. So today, the five tips that I'm gonna uh, share with you, I took some notes because I had a lot of ideas, but I think I whittled it down into five. So when learning scales, so often we get really wrapped up and concerned with the notes. Okay, an A scale, A major scale has these notes, A, B, C sharp, D, E, F sharp, G sharp, A. A G scale has G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, G. And my first tip is don't worry about the notes. Are they important? Absolutely, 100% they are important. But I want you to be able to play the scale, I want you to be able to hear it, and I want you to be able to carry it out effortlessly, okay? Which is what brings me to my first tip, and that is to use the shape of the scale as your reference. Don't concern yourself with the notes contained within the scale right off the bat. Use just the shape visualize that scale shape. You can visualize it as a series of dots on the fingerboard. You can visualize it or or think of it in terms of which finger frets which string at a certain fret. In fact, that's the way I'm gonna share with you right now. So for this little exercise we'll do, your index finger is gonna tackle everything on the fourth fret, middle finger everything on the fifth, ring finger everything on the sixth, and pinky finger everything on the seventh. We're gonna play an A major scale in a closed position. Closed position means that it's movable. There's no open notes, so wherever we move it, it'll be in a new key, but it'll still be a major scale. So for today, we're gonna treat it uh, as an A major scale, so we'll actually start it on the fifth fret with our middle finger. So here's the scale. I'm gonna describe it in a weird way first, And then I'll actually back up and share with you how it sounds or how I visualize it in terms of which finger frets what. So we'll start off on the 5th fret of the low E, move to the 7th fret of the low E, 
Index finger then moves to the fourth fret of the A string. We go fourth fret of the A, fifth fret of the A, seventh fret of the A. Then we move to the D string, fourth fret, sixth fret, seventh fret. Same pattern on the G, fourth, sixth, seventh. The B string, fifth, seventh. And the high E, fourth, and fifth. Basic A major scale. In fact, this is how it's gonna sound in its entirety. Right. Do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do. Uh, two times. Do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do. Do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do. So that's great and everything, but that's a lot to keep track of, all those fret numbers and things, which is why I'm gonna urge you to think of scales in terms of which finger frets what. Remember, index finger, everything on the fourth fret, middle, the fifth, ring, the sixth, pinky the seventh. So I think of this scale shape as, the, as, as follows. Middle, pinky, index, middle, pinky, index, ring, pinky, index, ring, pinky, middle, pinky, index, middle. Why do I do that? Well, because when I move it, it's the same pattern. pattern of fingers is the same. So think of scales in terms of a shape or a pattern, okay? It will take a lot of the kind of the, the grind out of learning scales initially. My second tip to you is that it's best to practice scales within a musical context, be it a backing track. But if you don't have access to a backing track, don't worry you can still practice scales in a musical context. Again, I'm gonna use that same scale that I used for the uh, demonstration on tip number one, the A major scale. So for musical context, what I'll do is I'll play an A chord or something that hints at an A chord prior to playing the scale. Or better yet, I'll play the one, four, five chord of the key that I'm working in. So in this case, if you don't know one, four, five and that kind of lingo, don't worry. Uh, in this case, for the, for the key of A, what I'll do is I'll play an A chord, a D chord, an E chord, and then an A chord. Right before I play the scale, because it gives context. You can kind of hear how the notes play against those chords. Even though they're not playing all the time, it just gives you that context, which is so important for the musicality of the scale. The third tip I have for you, and this one's a pretty simple one, it just involves uh, uh, getting that scale in your memory, and that is repetition. I want you to think of learning a scale almost like you're going to the gym. Literally do three sets of 10 of the scale. Do three sets of 10 ascending. <laughs> three sets of 10 descending. Whoops. Right? This repetition is gonna build muscle memory, and then you can lean on that muscle memory instead of thinking, okay, middle finger, pinky, middle, index. You don't have to think about that after that muscle memory has been developed. So just just put your licks in, no pun intended, uh, and do, do uh, Good, good couple sets of the scale, right? Like I said, three sets of 10 ascending, three sets of 10 descending, and then move along. The more you do that, the more it'll become hardwired and, and just concrete in your brain. Uh, the fourth tip I have for you is I want you to play scales in a musical fashion. Once you've learned it, you've done the repetitions, you've figured out the pattern, you've done it in a musical context, I want you to explore the scale in different ways, integrating patterns when you can, when playing them. One of the patterns that I, that I, uh, I, I like to use is kind of the, it feels like two steps forward, one step back, but we're actually going up four notes and back three notes. Here's what, here's what I mean. So I'll do the first four notes, go back three, start there and go do another four notes, back three, and then start another four notes. Back three, another four. Back three, another four. All right, so if, if you kind of get the vibe of it, it's gonna sound like this. All right, do that throughout the scale. You can do that ascending, descending. You can do it in a bunch of different manners. That's just one pattern. You can do it in sets of three. Uh, through a 
of four in there, but you get the idea. Uh, there's also uh, a, a chance that you can actually do it in triads, the notes that make up the chord. That would sound like this. <laughs> But you get the idea. I want you to integrate patterns of picking when you're practicing those scales that go outside of that linear processing. Linear meaning one note to the next. Right? Instead of you know, instead of that linear processing, do it in patterns. Right? It's just a little bit more musical and it can actually cause musical ideas to sprout just from those different patterns that you're using to play through the scale. The last tip that I have for you is to think outside the box. Once you have those scale patterns down or a single scale pattern down, then I want you to lean on your ear a little bit more. For example, okay, I've got this pattern down. Great, I can play it forward, backwards, inside and out. I can play it with a mu in musical context. I've done my repetitions. I can play different patterns within that scale. Now I want you to find that note, your starting note, on a different string. And out of nowhere, seemingly out of nowhere, I want you to hunt and peck for the right scale tones in order. Why would I have you do this? Well, the reason I want to have you do this is because you've developed the, mus the muscle memory you're playing through that pattern now, seemingly effortlessly. Now I want you to lean on your ear a little bit more in that I want you to be able to kind of hear that do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do and hunt and peck around to see if you can find the right notes. And then if you hit something wrong, you'll be like, oh, not it. And you can kind of use your ear to suss out where that scale lays out. I'm less concerned about the shape on this last tip, and I'm more concerned about you using your ear to fill in the blanks. So there you have it. That's just kind of a quick rundown on, rundown on how to practice scales. Now, don't feel like you have to sit down and do this all at once, but just quick review of the tips that I threw out there. Number one, Think of that scale as a pattern of fretting fingers or a shape, whichever jives with the way that you learn the best. Second, I can make sure I did this right in the right order, uh, musical context is absolutely crucial. So play a chord from that key, preferably the main chord from that key, uh, the one chord, and then go on and play your scale. It'll give a little bit more meaning to the scale that you're playing. Third, use repetitions. Think of learning a scale much like going to the gym. You have to develop those muscles over time. So repetitions in sets is absolutely key. And the fourth tip that I have for you is to play patterns within those scales. Those can result in musical ideas, original music, melody lines, but those patterns will make the scales a little bit more uh, usable. And again, I'm referring to that like four notes up, three notes back, whatever pattern kind of jives with your fretting fingers and picking hand. And last but certainly not least, think outside the box. Once you got that uh, scale pattern nailed, then go ahead and start on the same note in a different place and see if you can just kind of hunt and peck your way and find that scale. It's great ear training and something that I think is invaluable to every guitar geek, no matter where you're at in your guitar journey. So you have it. That's practicing scales. Now, Noah, this is the time that I want to go to the mailbag, but I want to attend to some very important Acoustic Tuesday business. Yes, Do you I know, know what that may be. I think I do. I know you mentioned there's going to be some curveballs today. There's going to, yeah, we're just but, going to go all willy nilly. But I think there's a little tradition that I think uh, you have to, that we have to do. We have to partake in. Yes. Let's do it. Guitar Geek trivia is up as of right now. Here is your Guitar Geek trivia question. This is a, this is a fun one. I'm really proud of this one. In what year was the phonograph invented? Was it A, 1863, B, 1877, C, 1894, or D, 1904? Go ahead and ponder that, and at the end of the show, I'll be sure to give you the answer. Now, I do want to move on to my next item, which happens to be the strings that I was using on that guitar, uh, but I want to visit the mailbag because it was pretty eventful. I recently had a birthday about a month ago, and because of the way that we film things, uh, I have a lot of well, I have a lot of birthday cards, and I just want to shoot some quick thank yous out. Is that okay, Noah? Please. I know that uh, sometimes the mailbag isn't as fruitful for you, <laughs> but um, 
I would appreciate you just let me do this for two seconds. Hey, man, you know what? It was your birthday. I get it. <laughs> okay. You do you. Here. <laughs> Thanks. I really appreciate that. Um, <clears throat> first off, these two envelopes. I cannot reveal the contents of these envelopes. It's not contraband, I promise you that, but they are. Uh, there are pics contained in these envelopes, and I hope to feature them on a future episode of Acoustic Tuesday, but I have to try them out first. So, pics came in, I'm excited. You should be too. Next, new issue of Acoustic Guitar. Lawrence Juber is on the cover. There's a, a, a section on flat picking fills. I'm excited to dig in. Literally, this just came in, so I haven't even had a chance to crack it open yet, but if it's anything like the last issue of Acoustic Guitar, I'm, I'm pretty excited. So, that came in. And now on comes the onslaught of, of birthday awesomeness. And I just wanna thank everybody for the kind birthday wishes, the kind words, and for those of you that send stuff, that was way above and beyond anything I would have ever expected. Uh, so thank you. Uh, first up, this came from Utah from Acoustic Tuesday viewer and Tony's Acoustic Challenge member, Honey. She sent this really cool Acoustic Guitar Geek card for me, and I really appreciate that. There was even some hand-drawn bees on the inside, which I thought was a great touch. So thank you, Honey, for sending that. Next up, Dee Dee and Kenny uh, sent me this card, and I'm just gonna open it so you can see what happens. <laughs> you get the idea. Uh, it just gave me a great laugh, and it also reminded me of a Guitar Geek moment I actually shared with Dee Dee and Kenny at the very, uh, at the second Tony's Acoustic Jam, Tony's Acoustic Challenge Jamboree. Um, we actually played that song together. They just sprung this song on me, and I sang it in a, uh, uh, awful fashion. It was it was quite delightful. Uh, so that happened. So that was a great card. They also included a, a very nice Amazon gift card. So thank you, Kenny and Dee Dee. Really appreciate that. Uh, next from Joe and Don R up in Helena, our neighbors to the north. They sent me this killer Snoopy birthday card and some gifts. Now, now Joe and Don are responsible for the mascot for the Acoustic Life Festival. So the bar was set pretty high, but they did send me for my birthday some Ginger Viking beard oil and some Ginger Viking anti-frizz spray, which I am in, in dire need of, by the way, Noah. I was looking today, I got out of the shower and I, I, you know, I didn't blow dry my beard. I concur. But I dried it and it just was, was freaking out. So this is good timing, Joe and Don. Thank you so much. And Noah, yes, they Tony. included a gift for you. No, they didn't. They did. They included Michael Jackson's Malt Whiskey Companion for Get. Levi and you. Um, so I would like to say I'm pretty excited about it, but it, it probably means that there's just going to be more scotch here. That is exactly correct. So, so I am excited for that. <laughs> Thank you for thinking of Levi and I. I can't wait to dig into that. So like I said, Noah, the mailbox was chock full. I've got two more things left. Uh, this next one comes from James M. And he says... Attention, Tony Pola Castro and Noah Jacob Heckman Jr. the first. Hope I got Noah's name right. Anyway, enclosed are four sizes of compression elbow support arm sleeves. I thought these would be great to keep your arm from sticking to the guitar when you have a t-shirt on. They're about seven bucks each on eBay. Different colors are also available. So he sent four of these sleeves, and I took one out of the packaging just so you all could see it. It's kind of like what, runner, what runners wear, and I thought this was a cool guitar geeky item because you put it on when you're playing, and you just, it kind of keeps your arm from sticking to the guitar. I don't have it on all the way. This is maybe not my size, but you get the idea. And uh, it kind of keeps that grime off the front of the guitar. So pretty awesome and cool tip from James. Now, James also included Noah in his mailbag. What? A, a shipment. He says, um, oh, he says, here's another uh, kind of the frugal tip. He says, tube socks are another way to do it. Just cut off the toe area, just past where they are sewed on, and then pull them on with the elastic part over your bicep. There you go. No more gunk on the front of your guitar. Uh, also enclosed are a pair of guitar socks for Noah, since he hardly ever gets stuff in the mailbag. If they don't fit him, I'm sure one of his offspring can use them. <laughs> so, Noah, these, uh, these guitar socks are for you from James. Hey, all right. So, <laughs> thank you, James. So thank that you, James. Cool. Thanks for watching and thanks for sending that in. Um, now, my uh, my th the last item, I promise, and then we'll move on. Um, the last item comes from Houston, Texas, from Tony S. And uh, Tony caught wind of the fact that I'm getting married in a mere days, 11 days from this, this moment. Um, and Noah's actually officiating this wedding. True. So not only does Noah keep me in line here at the studio, but he's going to keep my life and marriage in line by delivering to me the vows that I need to say. 
It is uh, my pleasure, Tony. <laughs> so, so Tony S. sent uh, sent a card that I haven't opened yet because I want to open it with Whitney. Uh, so I want to thank you, Tony. And then as a, as a wedding gift, this is very kind, and I, I was really blown away by the generosity here. Uh, Tony sent me a... a uh, uh, a McKinney, uh, I'm sorry, an Elliot Capo, uh, the newest Elliot Capo that's out, and that is a, a twist Capo, and it's, it's just gorgeous. It's a thing of beauty. It's stainless steel, and it's twisted. It's just aesthetically gorgeous. Functionally, it's amazing. I already tried it out, and uh, just want to thank Tony for this. It, it was just super kind of him and his wife to send that along and to think of, of Whitney and I. Uh, I'm sure Whitney will love the Capo as well, because that means I'll play in key. Right, Noah? <laughs> yes. And now uh, I, I have my obligation, Noah, that I have to fulfill, and that is, uh, Noah, what did you get in the mailbag? Well, Tony, I'm glad you asked because in, well, you obviously shared with me some things that I already received yeah. that I wasn't aware of. Which I'm excited to do. That was cool. And that's like a bonus because <laughs> I did have something to share. Uh, the same Tony S. who sent you the Elliot Capo also decided to include something for myself. And he sent me a nice little note uh, just saying, of course, you know, you never seem to get anything. <laughs> uh, and so he wanted to throw in something for me. And he got me a fidget cube. A fidget cube. <laughs> and I don't know if that was also something to the effect of, I know you have a lot of kids, so maybe you're stressed out. Or <laughs> maybe I can distract them with this. There but you go. I thought about using it while I'm officiating at your wedding. Oh. And so while I'm talking, I go like, so do you, Tony, <laughs> take wit. <laughs> Could you do that over the microphone too? That'd yes. Be swell. Yes. <laughs> so that's it for the mailbag, Noah, unless you have other things hiding no? over there. Nope. Nothing awesome. hiding. Well, well, thanks to everybody who, who sent stuff in. That was, was super kind. And like I said, way above and beyond. And we just appreciate it. It's, a, it's our chance to connect with you through Acoustic Tuesday. Um, next up. Like I said, I'm doing things way out of order, and I'm kind of excited because it's going to keep me on my toes. Uh, next up, I want to share with you some strings that I'm trying out right now. They're on my Thompson Dread. I'm going to share with you more of the sound of them here in just a second. Um, but, you know, in my acoustic guitar world, in strings specifically, um, once I got turned on to the Santa Cruz strings, the parabolic tension strings, they are pretty much top of the heap, king of the castle whatever you know witty phrase that i can't think of right now um, and they and they still are even after trying these ernie ball aluminum bronze strings but you know how certain guitars react to strings differently well i have a martin hd35 and a 1935 uh, martin single 017 both of those guitars shine with the santa cruz strings and I put uh, the mid tensions on my dreadnought. I put the low tensions on the small body. Great, great match for those guitars. Those guitars won't probably ever see another pair of strings, except for some other experiments I have going on. Those are for future episodes of Acoustic Tuesday. Uh, but the Thompson Dread that I just got, it's a new guitar. Um, I put the Santa Cruz mid tension strings on, and it sounded gorgeous, beautiful, right? And it just just sounded powerful and awesome. But then I thought, you know, I gotta try these Ernie Ball aluminum bronze strings because I've seen them all over the place. I've seen a bunch of modern finger style uh, uh, percussive type guitar players playing them. Um, I've seen, let's see, Adrian Ballou, I've seen Mike Dawes, Andy McKee, all using aluminum bronze strings. And then the Acoustic Life Festival happened in June and 10 minutes before he we went on stage, Antoine Defour is changing his strings. What strings is he using? The aluminum bronze strings. And I'm like, okay. These will clearly help me play just like Antoine Defour. These strings don't allow you to play like Antoine Defour, but the tone I was really, really floored with. Do I think they're gonna replace Santa Cruz strings in my world? On some guitars, no, but quite possibly on the Thompson. And I say this because it adds a clarity to the low end that I absolutely love. I mean, it, it makes the guitar, it, it's just this crispy airiness and it's this composed low end that I absolutely love. Like it just has this beautiful presence and this, this, um, this power and punch 
that I think is a great match for the mahogany back and size, the Adirondacks spruce top. And I, I'm speaking of these strings very highly, but I, I also found a, a great video of Andy McKee. I'm sorry, not Andy McKee. I did find a video of Andy McKee. You can find that at acousticlife.tv forward slash AT56. But the interview part that I wanted to, uh, uh, wanted to show all of you is actually with Mike Dawes. And he, uh, he just kind of shares his thoughts on, and experiences on the strings, and I think it's totally worth uh, a listen. So let's have a listen. One, two, three. Hi, my name's Mike Dawes. I'm a fingerstyle guitar player from the south of England. I'm here to talk about the fantastic innovation and the guys at Ernie Ball, the aluminium bronze guitar strings that I'm currently playing. And the first thing I noticed is that these strings just totally locked into the guitar. It was like the guitar was meant to have these strings on. When you're playing these lovely harmonics and high, high frequency stuff, that they cut through incredibly well. When I put the strings on, they, they sounded how I imagined my recorded guitar would sound. Uh, if that makes any sense. I play in some, some quite unusual tunings, sometimes with the bass all the way down in, you know, C or even down to A, and, and they still have a lot of clarity and, and still a lot of brightness when you get down into that register, which was immediately apparent. They hold their tuning fantastically. Sometimes I find myself having to tune mid-set or mid-song quite dramatically with other strings, but these, as soon as I put these on, I feel like uh, these are the strings that the guitar was born with, you know, it's part of the guitar. And I've never broken one, as yet, as well. So really, really fantastic strings. I can't really see myself trying anything else, you know, as soon as I tried these down in Arizona back in January, it just felt right. And, um, and yeah, I'd highly recommend these to anyone. So that was Mike Dawes speaking pretty highly of the Ernie Ball aluminum bronze strings. Now, just to show you that I did indeed try them out, uh, I love the packaging on Ernie Ball stuff. It's just, it's just kind of classy, and I love it. Even the string envelopes, they just feel substantial. Uh, so I want to share that with you as well. But the other thing that, that really struck me when Mike Dawes said, he said, I've never broke a string. Now, a guy that uses that many different tunings on a single guitar who doesn't break a string, that's, that says a lot. So I did a little digging, some guitar geek uh, uh, archeological findings, if you will, something along those lines, uh, guitar geek spelunking. I did some digging and I went to the Ernie Ball site <laughs> and I noticed the composition of these strings. There's two things that struck me. Number one, the, the, the wrap wire, right? The E, A, D, and G strings are wrapped in an alloy of aluminum and copper, hence the name aluminum bronze strings. And the aluminum not only adds to that crisp and airiness of the strings, but it also actually resists corrosion, which was news to me, and I wanted to share that with you all. But the core wire that they're using for these strings is called miraging steel, and I hope I'm saying that right. The spelling is M-A-R-A-G-I-N-G. Uh, somebody who knows more about metal might correct me, and that's totally fine. I'm not claiming that I know anything about metal. Um, but uh, I'm gonna call it, so it's called miraging steel. Okay, and that's, it's a hex core wire, so what lies at the heart of the wound strings is that miraging steel. Now, I thought this was just kind of marketing speak and hype, and I was like, what is this? So I had to look it up, and I did. Now here's the definition. Miraging steel is a steel alloy that contains up to 25% nickel or other metals, and it's strengthened by a process of slow cooling and age hardening. Now get this, it has superior strength and toughness without losing malleability, meaning it's flexible but still tough, which I thought, well, that's no wonder they used it for a core wire. So pretty awesome little fact. So check out those Ernie Ball aluminum bronze strings. I, I mean, my experience with them is awesome on this particular guitar. I totally dig them and I think uh, uh, they're worth an experiment for sure. And of course, if you wanna check those out, you can go to acousticlife.tv forward slash AT56. You'll be able to see more videos on the strings, a full write up, and then of course, those important buy links. And why are those buy links important? Well, they're important because if you use one of those affiliate links from acousticlife.tv, we get a portion, a percentage of that sale. And then we go ahead and pass that same percentage directly onto Guitars for Vets as a donation. So just by being a guitar geek, buying guitar geek things, things through acousticlife.tv, TV, you're actually supporting Guitars for Vets, which is something we can all certainly get behind. Now, I know we're doing things out of order, but 
at this point of the show, I would love to know, I, I want to know what you think about the show. If you made a new discovery, if you want us to make a new discovery, uh, if you just want to say hi and let us know where you're tuning in from, uh, please do so in the comments below. And in fact, while you're at it, leaving a comment, if you have not subscribed to this YouTube channel yet, please do so. Super easy. Hit that red subscribe button. Click that little gray bell. That'll give you a notification each and every time a new video goes live. And if you want Acoustic Tuesday delivered directly to your email, that basically means you'll never miss an episode. Just click the link in the description and you'll be able to get Acoustic Tuesday hand delivered, digitally delivered to your email every single week. So you're always up to date on all the guitar geeky goodness. Now, Noah, I know you pulled some comments from previous episodes. Sure did. And I wish to, uh, I wish to hear those now. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Right away, sir. <laughs> Mr. Tony, sir. <laughs> all right. Oh. Uh, first shout out uh, comes from Marco R. Says, hey, Tony, uh, like, the, like the show, tuning in since the first episode from North Rhine, Westphalia, Germany. Cool. Cheers. A.K.A. Deutschland. Awesome. Okay. Next shout out comes from Steve P. who says, hello from Bristol, Connecticut, home of ESPN. And I know what that uh, means, but I'm sorry. I'm not that excited. Well, I am excited for two reasons. Number yes. one, hockey season is, it's we're coming up on hockey season. Mm -hmm. Registration for adult league just started. Mm. I will be on the fatties again. Again, already. Hoping to uh, resume our championship dynasty that we started last year. Wow. And second, ESPN brings me back to my childhood. Because I used to watch Sports Center every morning before I went to school, like mm. fifth, sixth grade. And Linda Cohn, I think her name was Linda Cohn, she was on Sports Center. And I just thought she was, I thought she was gorgeous. I had a crush on her. Yeah, that's my I, ESPN story. That's cool, man. Yeah. I think I watched like Sesame Street or... or <laughs> In gum, fifth and sixth grade? Or gummy bears. I don't know. I'm just <laughs> not... Certainly not Sports Center. And that's fine. So, you wanted to hear these. I know. I, I'm sorry. I do wish to hear them now. <laughs> Next shout out comes from Max H. If Tony and Noah are on my PC, it must be Tuesday. Hello from Sulphur Springs, Texas. Nice. Yeah, I was having, I was struggling, struggling with that word earlier. You were struggling with it a little bit. Yes. A little struggies. Next one. <laughs> next shout out comes from Marco Sebastian Hernandez Pena. Whoa, you really did good there. Thank you. Says hi, I'm Marco. I'm from Mexico. Great content, by the way. Keep up the good work. Oh, thanks for tuning in. That's awesome. Next shout out comes from Brooks P. Says good afternoon from Wake Forest, North Carolina. Awesome. Then we have K.L. McIntyre. He says, howdy from Birmingham, Alabama. Love the show. All right. And our last shout out comes from Kyle Scam, who says, I just discovered the show. It's awesome. I'm a Brazilian living in California. Oh, cool. Well, thanks for tuning in. That's, that's a fantastic, that's a marvelous reading of comments, Noah. N Noah earlier today said he pulled me aside. It's really just the two of us in the studio. He didn't pull me aside. He just said, uh, he said, hey, Tone. You think you can chill out on the like usage of fantastic and outstanding and just replace them with something else? So I'm trying. It's really hard. So marvelous. I'm throwing marvelous into the bunch. Mm -hmm. Quite possibly stupendous. Yep. That maybe was one. tantalizing. That's that, a new one. I thought. Yeah. Of. That's a good one. Yeah. So I'm I'm working on it. I'm I appreciate that. Well, yeah. Hey, just trying to keep it keep it lively. And the Acoustic Tuesday viewers appreciate it as well. <laughs> Well, you're you're welcome. You can thank Noah because he's he's the one that leaded the leaded led the change. <laughs> you guys want to know what I'm listening to this week? Because I want to share with you what I'm listening to this week. This week, uh, I'm listening to an unlikely acoustic guitar hero. This man that I'm listening to is more associated with well, let's say '80s pop, mustaches, tank tops from the videos I've watched. Songs like Private Eyes, Rich Girl, Man Eater. There's another one. What was the other one I was talking about? Uh, I can't remember. Oh, uh, 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 something. Sarah Smile. Sarah Smile. That's yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the person I'm referring to is John Oates. Now, you think of John Oates as the more mustached half of Hall and & Oates, and that, indeed, he is. However, he just released an album entitled Arkansas. And this album... Actually, it was a trivia question on a previous Acoustic Tuesday episode. This album actually started as a tribute to Mississippi John Hurt, which, guitar geek fact, he's actually using Mississippi John Hurt's guild on this guitar. 
uh, on this album because he owns it. He owns that guitar. Now, this album I was really totally sideswiped by because I didn't expect anything that I heard. First of all, it sounds awesome. His guitar playing is magnificent. Um, and if you look at the track listing on this album, it's songs that John has composed himself, but also a whole handful of traditional tunes that were arranged by John and his band. And I just thought, I thought the treatment of the tunes were so wonderful. I mean, reverence to the tradition of the tunes and American roots, but also a new take on a lot of them. Uh, so I'm just really pleased with the album overall. And I wanted to share that with you all. In fact, I found this great video by Reverb, uh, Reverb.com. They put out some of the most amazing content uh, online involved with guitar. And they actually had John sit down and play a tune called Spike Driver Blues. It's a Mississippi John Hart tune. And uh, you'll see what I'm talking about. He's, he's quite the acoustic guitar uh, aficionado if you will. Let's have a listen. Steel driving man name was John Henry. Oh, he went down. He went down. No, he went down Gonna wanna take this hammer to the captain Won't you tell him I'm gone Tell him I'm gone Oh, tell him I'm gone From East Colorado On to my home To my home On to my home That's where I'm gone That's where I'm gone mm -hmm. Carry down a hammer to kill John Henry But it won't kill me see John is quite the adept finger picker and his vocals I mean let's just shed a little bit of light on that quick I mean his vocals match the style so well that's the one thing I noticed on the album as well is that whether it was a bluesy song more on the rootsy bluegrassy end of things his voice matches the style so well and I'm wondering to myself why didn't you do this earlier why why did you, why did we have to wait so long for this? Uh, so thank you, John Oates, for making such awesome acoustic music. And I just I was on his website and I, I saw kind of the the promotional write up, and I, I just want to read a selection off of it because I think it's it's it says a lot about this album in particular. So here's here's uh, directly from his website. It says, quote, after completing an extensive book promotion tour for the book Change of Seasons, which is another thing we'll talk about later on Acoustic Tuesday, uh, in the spring of 2017, Oates resumed work on an important music project that represents the next exciting phase in his burgeoning solo roots music career. The project is entitled Arkansas and is set for release in 2018. Luckily, it's already out for us. Uh, originally inspired by the music and legacy of the legendary Mississippi John Hurt, the project grew to encompass other artists and styles that represent the dawn of American popular music. Stylistically diverse and eclectic, the collection features a full band that was put together specifically to bring the full range and flavors of classic American music styles to life. Oates crafted a number of original songs for the Arkansas album, selections actually inspired by the process of digging deep into the sonic soil of authentic roots music. I really believe this is the most vital and satisfying solo project I've ever embarked upon, Oates says of Arkansas. Of all the music I have ever made with anyone, for me this album sits right up there. Which, the reason I pulled that statement is because I think it's pretty bold from uh, an artist who has written some pretty iconic songs. So for him to say that he believes in this album that much, I just was like, whoa, that's a good feeling as an artist. So kudos to you, John Oates. Thanks for sharing your music with us again. <laughs> I want to keep going, Noah. I, I, I know we have a couple things that uh, are on the agenda. I've got some guitar signals to share, and then I've got a, a festival I want to tell everybody about. But can we do, uh, would you mind doing Small Winds now? I I'm would feeling, love to. I, I need a little injection of positivity. I thought you'd never ask. <laughs> All right, Tony. 
I have for us today two small wins pulled from a previous Acoustic Tuesday All right. for us today. First one comes from Dean J, who says, I've had a Larve OM5 for about a year and enjoy, and enjoy the sound of it, but it seemed harder to play than my Martin 00018 and Taylor A12. So I had the action adjusted, and it is like a totally different guitar. I can't put it down. I installed a K&K Pure Mini in it, and with a Fishman Loudbox Mini, I am having a blast. Also, I really enjoy the show and everything you produce. Oh man, that's awesome! I love that's a great win because it's like you, it's like a, um, I don't know, it's like rekindling an old flame. You know, you buy a guitar, and you kind of maybe falls out of favor because it doesn't play so well, mm -hmm. and then you get it set up, and it's like, oh, hey, honey, how are you doing? Yeah, I think it's amazing, just what a setup can do. Oh yeah, to the absolutely. guitar. All right, and the next one for today, Tony, comes from Scott H, who says. Thinking I might build my own guitar. Mm. So I figure I would try an ukulele first to see if I could do it and enjoy the process. Well, I built the uke and it turned out great. So I gave it to my wife. And that's when the real small win benefits began. <laughs> that's awesome. Well, congratulations on your first instrument. Build. That's outstanding. That's cool. And that is way cool. And I'm hoping that results in maybe some fam jam action later. Right. And maybe resulting in you building a, an acoustic guitar this Correct. time around. Because the confidence is growing. That's well, awesome. Congratulations. Well, that's what would be what the fam jam would be. It'd yeah. be the built guitar playing with the wife and the built uke. I love it. It's totally organic and original. I love it. <laughs> I have a small one I want to share. Okay. This is a great one because I think I think all of us here in the Acoustic Tuesday world, um, I think we we all contributed to this small win because Guitars for Vets. I just found out uh, they started a new chapter in Bismarck, North Carolina. North Carolina. <laughs> <laughs> Fail. Bismarck, North Dakota. This is what I meant. I did not mean North Carolina. Bismarck, North Dakota now is home to a new Guitars for Vets chapter. So congratulations, Guitars for Vets. Congratulations to everybody involved in that. I think, um, I hope I get the names right here. I believe Jenna is is the one that's coordinating everything with the VA hospital. And I think Chris is the instructor that's instructing everybody. And the last I checked, I think there was four members in their group. Uh, so it's a great start. And uh, just, uh, I thought it was a great small one we could all kind of rejoice in. So good job. Guitars for Vets in North Dakota and hell, even North Carolina. Right. Good job, North it. Carolina, too. We'll throw them in there, too. <laughs> now, Tony. Yeah. Uh, small wins and comments aren't the only thing that we get. I know. Uh, do you have any Guitar Geek wins? I do. You do? I actually have two You Know Your Guitar Geeks win to share with uh, you today. Noah, let, let your light shine. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm just sharing the light of others, okay? And it's an honor to do so. First one comes from James M., who says, you know you're a guitar geek when you buy a great guitar for a great price for resale, but then you end up keeping it for yourself even though you already have one just like it. That's classic. That is a <laughs> line that every guitar geek has used or will use. It's, it goes like this. This is how it plays out. Oh, that guitar's at a great price. I could totally buy that. I could flip it and actually make some money on it. So that's the justification for making the purchase. Now, you get the guitar home and you're like, Oh, I can't wait to sell this. And you start playing it, you're like, I'm not going to sell this. Who am I kidding? And pretty soon that guitar becomes your own, part of your own guitar arsenal. That's a good one, James. Thanks for sharing that. Yeah, you know, Tony, it makes you wonder if the person who sold it in the first place just didn't get it set up. That's a good point. And so they're just like, they're meh. But then if they would have got it set up, it would have been just like, you know, Dean's small win from earlier. I love it. I, that's, that's a good point you make. If you're thinking of selling a guitar, get it set up. Just saying. Now. That's it. Our second one for today comes from Mark T. And he says, You know you're a guitar geek when you walk into Guitar Center just to buy a new set of strings, and you walk out with a new set of strings attached to a new guitar. <laughs> I love this. <laughs> I, we were talking about this earlier, and you made the face that it, I, I see, you know, I see the scenario. Hey, honey, I'm, I'm going to go grab some strings. I'll be back in like 15 minutes. And like an hour and 15 minutes goes by. And in you walk with the case, yeah. and then Noah has this face. Can you do the face where like? Oh sure. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, it started right because you you said uh, you get back to the wife, you know, and now you got to face, you know, the wife. Or the, oh yeah. You know, the spouse. You gotta explain. And you're starting to explain some stuff, and I said, no. What it's more like is you show up, and the wife is standing there looking at you, and you're just like. <sighs> <laughs> just 
no words. <laughs> just no don't. words. But you know, I mean, come on, are you surprised? Uh yeah. Guitar geek spouses are a special breed. And we I mean, I should say this on behalf of all guitar geeks, we do appreciate them. Yes. Because I know Whitney has, has I've put her through. Mm-hmm. There's so many times, you know you're a guitar geek when you're supposed to go out to dinner with reservations at 7 o'clock, and it's 7.15, and you're still brainlessly just playing the guitar at the kitchen table, staring at the wall, and she's like, are you, gonna, are, are you ready to go yet? So that's mine. <laughs> Can we, should we move on? Please. Okay. The, the last thing on my list today is a festival that was brought to my attention from an Acoustic Tuesday viewer. It was left in the YouTube comments and I was scrolling through and I grabbed the festival, uh, but I didn't grab the name that it was attached to. So whomever uh, recommended this festival, I just wanna thank you. I'm sorry, I usually pull the screen names and I totally spaced it. Uh, but the festival I'm talking about is in Bristol, Bristol, Tennessee, Bristol, Virginia. Let's just call it Bristol. More on that in a second. Uh, it's the Bristol Rhythm and Roots Reunion. And it's being held September 21st through the 23rd in Bristol. And uh, Bristol, as you know, or as you may or may not know, is it's kind of the birthplace of country music. It's, it's home of the infamous Bristol sessions that the Carter family was a part of. The Carter family first recorded in Bristol um, way back. They came up I, hopefully it's up. I don't know the geography very well, but they came up from uh, Macy Spring, Virginia to record in Bristol. And now they were a part of the, the, like I said, now infamous Bristol sessions. But anyways, this festival is, it seems like such a magical festival. I mean, the lineup is killer. More on that in a second. But I found this, this promo video that I think encapsulates how geeky this festival is. So let's actually have a look at that. Reunions. They're those wonderful times when we meet up with old friends and make some new ones. They're when we come back to the place where it all began, a place that's familiar but always manages to surprise us. Because even if we weren't born here, it's a part of us. And we're always happy to be back. Bristol Rhythm and Roots Reunion. Tickets on sale now. I just love the imagery in that promo because it, it just, it shows guitars, it shows jams, music, and smiles, and just overall geeking out. So I, I just wanted to recommend this festival. I haven't personally been to it, but uh, the recommendation in the YouTube comments was, was pretty strong. So I wanted to bring it up on the show. It looks like there's still uh, um, wristbands available. I think they're wristbands, tickets, whatever you want to call it. There's single day tickets, there's weekend passes. Not sure on the prices and, and how that's structured, but of course you can go to acousticlife.tv forward slash AT56 and you'll be able to learn all the details. There'll be links to the uh, Bristol Rhythm and Roots Reunion uh, website and all that good stuff. But So check this out. The other thing that I learned upon researching this is that it's actually attached to a nonprofit. So this festival, the proceeds are, are for a nonprofit organization entitled, get this, Birthplace of Country Music. Uh, so that's that's pretty awesome. Uh, uh, they, they get proceeds from the festival. There's also a museum there. Um, and it's kind of, I, I believe that the funds are used to uh, curate the museum and kind of run all of this stuff and kind of keep that, that musical, uh, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Vibe. I'll say vibe. I was thinking uh, vibr vibrancy. <laughs> in in Bristol. So that's pretty awesome. Now, I just want to, one quick note on the lineup. I was looking through the lineup and I wanted to highlight a couple acts because I was looking through the lineup and I thought, oh, I featured them on Acoustic Tuesday before. I'm thinking of featuring them on Acoustic Tuesday. So it's, it's a pretty heavy lineup. Here are a couple of the standouts. Uh, Taj Mahal, Old Crow Medicine Show, the Steel Drivers, Doyle Lawson and Quicksilver, The Old 97s, Sierra Hall, you've got to see her, she's fantastic, Molly Tuttle, featured on Acoustic Tuesday, probably the most out of any of these artists, um, uh, Blue Highway, and McKay and Lay, and that's uh, Noel McKay and Brennan Lay, of uh, high, formerly of High Plains Jamboree, and they were I featured them back on Acoustic Tuesday episode three, I believe, so it's really cool to see that duo a part of the Bristol Rhythm and Roots reunion. So if you're in the area, if you're planning a vacation, uh, check it out, grab tickets, and, and just take in an awesome weekend of acoustic music. And again, thank you to, to the person that left that comment in the uh, YouTube comments. It was just a cool discovery and something I didn't know about, and I'm sure I'm happy that I do now, and that I'm able to share it with you all. So uh, that pretty much wraps up Acoustic Tuesday, episode 56, Noah. I think I hit all my bases. 
Yep. Uh, I have a I have a checklist here, but it's I just went so out of order. I know. I well, th- I think I got everything. Well, w- last thing. There is one last thing. Yes, there is. We got okay. Let me. Uh, uh, I'm gonna very quickly review your Guitar Geek trivia question, and then I'll of course give you the answer. Your Guitar Geek trivia question was: In what year was the phonograph invented? Was it A, 1863, B, 1877, C, 1894, or D, 1904? Well, I'm happy to say that if you answered B, uh, 1877, you're absolutely correct. The phonograph was invented in 1877 by Thomas Edison. While other inventors had produced devices that could record sounds, Edison's phonograph was the first to be able to reproduce the recorded sound. His phonograph originally recorded sound onto a tinfoil sheet wrapped around a rotating cylinder. Alexander Graham Bell's Volta Laboratory made several improvements in the 1880s and introduced the graphophone, including the use of wax-coated cardboard cylinders and a cutting stylus that moved from side to side in a zigzag groove around the record. In the 1890s, Emil Berliner initiated the transition from phonograph cylinders to flat discs with a spiral groove running from the periphery to near the center, coining the term gramophone for disc record players. I just found that fascinating. I was looking at pictures of all the old record players. This was like a big time guitar geek, music geek black hole that I went down. So 1877. It doesn't, that doesn't seem that long ago, no one. Mm-mm. You know? No, I thought it was in the 1700s. You did? Yeah. I should have made a different choice then. Oh, oh well. Well, it's 1877. <laughs> there you have it. All right. Well, that that uh, uh, that is episode 56 of Acoustic Tuesday for you. We've packed its lunch. We've walked it out to the corner. We've put it on the bus off to school. And uh, one last thing we have to do is take a sneak peek into next week to see what's going to happen on Acoustic Tuesday episode 50, uh, 57. Yeah, I almost said 77. A lot of numbers getting thrown around right now. <laughs> Here's a sneak peek into next week. Next week on Acoustic Tuesday, I'm going to tell you about my bear encounter story. Uh, Whitney and I went camping a couple weekends ago, so I can't wait to tell you that. Uh, We're going to take a moment to limber up, you know, just because. And a viewer suggested artist that actually put me in a trance. I was listening to this artist. Four hours had passed. I don't even know what happened. But that's going to happen next week on Acoustic Tuesday. Don't forget you can catch Acoustic Tuesday every Tuesday at 10 a.m. Mountain Time on YouTube. And, of course, for your Acoustic Tuesday fix in between Tuesdays, go to AcousticLife.tv. It is a guitar geek playground just waiting for you to explore. There's extra reviews, extra videos, uh, purchase links for everything I've featured on Acoustic Tuesday trivia jokes it's all there and remember any purchase you make from acousticlife.tv that is from an affiliate link we get a percentage of that sale from amazon and then we go ahead and pass that same percentage on directly to guitars for vets so that we can make a donation on all guitar geeks behalf so with that being said i think it's time for me to to have a, a drink and not of coffee this time so cheers to you guitar geeks and we'll see you next tuesday on acoustic tuesday thanks for watching